welcome to the Hedberg Public Library. Tonight we are wrapping up a four-part series titled Public Speaking Pointers from Community Leaders. It's been a pleasure for the library to team up with the Janesville Toastmasters Club on this series which has shown the importance of good communication skills for people in all walks of life. Although the series is ending, the Toastmasters Club will continue to offer excellent support and opportunities at its monthly meetings. Here's Yuri Rashkin to give you more information about the Toastmasters Club and to introduce tonight's speaker. Thank you, Linda. I'd like to thank everyone for coming, especially our speaker. This has been great, great experience, and uh, I'm glad that we've been able to share what Toastmasters do a little bit more with the community. We're a club that specializes in helping people, helping ourselves, frankly, become better speakers, more effective speakers, and better leaders. We meet twice a month, on first and third Tuesday of every month, downstairs at the Hebert Public Library at seven o'clock, and it's a fun place to be. We practice various aspects of becoming a more effective public speaker. Some parts of it are prepared in advance. Some of it is on the spot speaking, kind of like this. So, um, moving on to the next part. Our speaker tonight is, here's something that might be helpful. Mike was elected to Wisconsin State Assembly in 2004 and represents the 44th Assembly District, which encompasses most of the city of Janesville, Ward 1 through 4, 7 through 11, and 13 through 25. In the legislature, he currently serves on the following committees, jobs and the economy, labor and industry, and transportation. In addition to his duties as a state representative, he serves as a UAW president, Local 95, and is on the board of directors for the Janesville Performing Arts Center, Blackhawk Technical College Foundation, and the Leadership Development Academy. Mike received his associate's degree from the University of Wisconsin, Rock County in 2000, and is a graduate of Janesville Sparker High School. He was born and raised in Janesville, has three children and two grandchildren, is married to UW Whitewater social worker, work lecturer, Sarah. I'm really excited to have Mike speak to us tonight because this, that's what this whole series is about, is to have people from the community who are effective public speakers, and we are lucky to have quite a few speak to us because for somebody like us and the Janesville Toastmasters, the best way I feel to become better at public speaking is to learn uh, from people who are good at this particular skill, which I think is an extremely important way to help us express ourselves. And so it is my great honor and privilege to welcome our speaker tonight, State Representative Michael Sheridan. Thank you all for being here tonight, and, and I especially want to thank the, the college students that are here tonight. You know, it's it's really nice outside. I you know to, to be in the building tonight. I appreciate, it. and I know you're getting credit for this, but still, <laughs> I give you a lot of a lot of credit just for being here. So, I want to thank Yuri and, and Toastmasters for having me here tonight, and uh, it is a, a great honor to be asked to uh, come and speak to to this group. So, uh, thank you all for being here. And, with that, I'm going to turn the turn this over to uh, Yuri's daughter Isabel to give the speech. To <laughs> no, maybe not. So I know she, I know that she, I know she can do it too. But uh, you know, I, I appreciate the friendship that, that I've gained in Yuri Rashkin and, and his wife Amy, and uh, you know, I, I also appreciate the involvement that you are having the community, joining the city council, not joining, being elected to the city council. That's not easy. So. Congratulations on that. So, um, my my speech tonight is going to be. I'm not going to be. You know, I've got some bullet points. Um, the the style that I that I like the most is you know uh, basically speaking um, as the spirit moves you, if you will. You know, speaking off the cuff. Um, reading speeches is not um, it, it, me and reading speeches don't go along real well, I, although I can do it, and sometimes there are situations where it's important to do that, um, especially in my business, um, I'm also president for United Auto Workers, and when we have contract negotiations, and I just actually came from one of our um, contract negotiations in which they were rolling it out to the, the members of that unit, it was a Black Hawk Credit Union unit, and you have to make sure that you say what you mean and mean what you say, and, and make sure that the, you know that you're you're not veering off from the important information that you're rolling out for them. 
So I've been president for the United Auto Workers for six years. Uh, uh, work at the General Motors plant, started there 31 years ago, and am soon to be retired. I'm going to be retiring June 1st and um, just dedicate hopefully the next, uh, the rest of my working career to the state legislature and, and politics. I love politics and um, a lot of people think I'm crazy and why would you want to do that kind of work, but um, I really enjoy it. It's gotten into my blood and, and there's a young man here tonight who actually worked in, in my office as a Cullen intern, uh, intern and his name is Austin Szynski and uh, wanted to say hi to him and, and it was just a pleasure to have him work in my office a couple years ago. And, did a great job, and he's another one that even um, before he graduated from high school, I mean, he, it's the politics are in his blood because he was down phone banking, and, and once again, I'm thinking, why would a teenager come out down and phone bank? And, but uh, very passionate about politics, and, and, and uh, has got a bright future. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, also, Bob Besselow is a, a UAW brother of mine, uh, and he's here tonight, and it's always good to see him. So. Thanks, Bob, for being here. Um, the, uh, the early influences that I've had and the reason that I got involved in politics, uh, there's, there's a number of people that, that were important in my life. Um, Tim Cullen, who was a dear friend, friend of mine, uh, you know, was a Senate Majority Leader for a number of years. And uh, you know he's, he's somebody that, that I always can go to and uh, bounce things off of him ask questions, so he's been uh, a big influence in my life. And when I first decided to run for state assembly, he was he got on board right away and was very helpful in my campaign. So that's very, very helpful. But uh, over the years, as uh, serving with uh, the UAW, uh, some of you that are from the community you know that we're very active in politics, always have been active in politics. And, and uh, you know, so I had uh, lots of opportunities to go to Madison, to go to Washington, D.C., and lobby on different issues that affected not only the workers in our, in our, our plants, but also the credit unions and the medical clinics, uh, things of that nature. So I've had many op great opportunities to um, go and talk to the different legislators. And at some point, I, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but um, I just thought, would love to do this someday and, and uh, you know I know that uh, for a number of years Wayne Wood who served over 30 years in the state legislature and did a fine job um, he finally one day uh, made the announcement that he was going to retire and the timing was was not the best for me I was just uh, I just uh, got into my second term as president and I'm thinking you know Wayne was there for 30 years if if the next person's there if I don't jump now, I'm not going to have this opportunity. So I, I took a, a leap of faith and, and ran for the state assembly. So for the last three years, I've been running up and down the highway, um, serving in both of those roles as president of the United Auto Workers and as a state legislator. And there, uh, it was interesting because the, the newspapers at the time, there was a lot of debate and they even had a, a survey which um, they, they asked, can he do both jobs? And, um, what I found is that the jobs really go together hand in glove. It, they, they, it's worked out very well. Uh, you know, any time that I had an issue down at General Motors, it's nice to have access to not only the state legislature, but also to, you know, to their state senators, and then of more importance, uh, the, the governor. You know, and um, the General Motors plant hasn't, uh, in the later, these later, or last few years, been uh, real stable. Um, you know, with the market, and so we had a lot of concerns about our long-term future. And when they closed six other plants across the system, our plant continued to survive, and I think it's in large part because of the great workforce that we have in Janes of Wisconsin. And that really is kind of a reflection of the community, not just Janes, but the state of Wisconsin. I think that, you know, it, it just seems like it's born into a, a, a good, strong work ethic. So, um, uh, anyway, to make that long story short, um, that was how I got an interest in politics, just by being around it. So I, I, I ran for state assembly and, and was successful at my run, and, and here I am three years later. So um, I am looking forward to, to my retirement so I can wholly focus on, on the state legislature. So um, some of my uh, inspirations and people that I admire uh, in their speaking ability, one of which is 
at the forefront of politics today is uh, a guy by the name of Barack Obama. And a few years ago, uh, if anybody taught, uh, told me that uh, a gentleman by the name of Barack Obama would be running for president of the United States, and not only running, but had a, uh, a good chance of, of winning that presidency, um, I think all of us is no way. And uh, what I have found about uh, with his speaking style and what he's done all across the United States, and for example, what he did in Iowa, um, when he, when he uh, gets exposed to people and gets a, an opportunity to talk to people, um, it's it's as if he's talking to you one on one, and um, you know he's speaking right to you. You know that's that's kind of how he makes you feel. So there's something about him. There's uh, you know I, I don't think that we've seen the, the this kind of a um, politician since the, the Kennedys in the 1960s. Uh, of which I had both Bobby Kennedy and John F. Kennedy. I was pretty young at the time, but as a political junkie, I've watched a lot of documentaries and, and watched, um, you know, just their speaking styles. And they just, they also had, although different, uh, different styles, um, they both had a tremendous passion uh, for what they did and, and had a way of, of winning people over very quickly. Another one is Martin Luther King, Jr. And every year I get an opportunity to speak um, at an event down at Black Hawk Technical College. And um, so each year I learn a little bit more about Martin Luther King Jr. and you know, just what he brought. And uh, you know, once again, I was, I was born in 1958, so I was you know, about 10 years old when I think it was 1968 when him and uh, Bobby Kenny and both were, were shot. Uh, but the, you know what they, you know they, they gave speeches that could move mountains, and um, you know that's that's why um, you know I think those speakers don't come across very often. So um, we're going to see. I guess tonight we're going to see how Barack Obama does out on the East Coast, and uh, I know that he's he's certainly in the fight of his life, and uh, hopefully this this primary is going to end soon so that we can you know, get focused on what happens this fall. So I think it's just, it's gone on and on and on. And, and, but that's the democratic process, so. Uh, the, the very first time, uh, I was scared to death to get up and speak in front of audiences. And I still uh, get, you know, the jitters before I get up and speak. Usually once I, once I get up and start speaking, I settle down and settle in, into, uh, into doing it. But, um, you know, those thoughts and uh, I have to try and stay as positive as I can. You know, think positive thoughts, you know, um, act as if, you know, that's one of the sayings. Uh, the, uh, the, there's another one, fake it till you make it. You know, a lot of times people will say, wow, you looked so confident up there. I said, and I'd say, well, you ought to see me on the inside, you know, because it's all jitters. And, um, but, you know, part of it is, is if after you've done this over and over enough times, it, it really does make a difference. But I, I think that the, the fear that you have before you go on stage uh, or, get, or to give a speech is a healthy fear, you know. And, and, and so for anybody that um, goes through that process of, of giving a, a speech in front of people, you know, just understand that that is very normal. And uh, it just comes with the territory. And like I said, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll become. Well, anyway, the first time I had an opportunity, um, I was kind of going through, it was about 1989, I was really going through a lot of reflection, trying to figure out where, where my life was and where is my life going. Uh, I had about 15 years into the General Motors plant and, and just felt like I needed to do more. There was, there was more to life. And so I started out, and it really was a life-changing experience for me, uh, I took the Dale Carnegie class. It's a, a class in, in public speaking. I, I see a lot of nods and, and people that, that know of that course. But, um, you know, I struggled with, uh, one of the things is I struggled with uh, worrying about things all the time. I struggled with uh, not having that positive thinking. And, and one of the, you know, there's, there's three books. One is The Power of Positive Thinking. Uh, I read that book and I dove headfirst into this and it was it was nice because we had a class and we had to read, we had assignments, and then every week we had to give up, get up and give a speech. And that was, I was scared to death, but I went through that process and, 
and you know what you you find out a lot about yourself. Um, another one of his books was how to stop worrying and start living. You know, and it's uh, you know once again it's reprogramming your brain and, and thinking positive thoughts, and and you know working through that. And for the life of me, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his third book that I that I read. Oh, how to win friends and influence people. And um, you know, part of that is I think it's it's uh, really a, a what I call a bedside manner. You know, treat people how you want to be treated. And you know, it, it, that's that doesn't you know that works not only in giving speeches but just the one-on-one -on -one communications that you have with people. You know. And, Treat them how you want to be treated. So there were so many things in, in those books, and um, it, it really did change my life. And, and from, from that point on, I, I had a fear of, of getting involved. What if people won't, you know, won't uh, support me or vote for me? And, and I just, once again took that leap of faith and, and ran. The first office I ran for was an executive board office at, at uh, General Motors, and, and I ran for sergeant at arms. And I didn't have a resume. Usually you put all the things that you've done in the community or, or what you've done in the plant. The only thing I had was a uh, vote for Mike Sheridan, Sergeant at Arm, and I had my picture on there. And that's all I could come up with. Well, they elected me anyway. So, um, so I was elected to that for three years. And then I um, found out that I really wanted to get into the bargaining side of the business. And that's really where... Um, you know, that's high pressure, you're going out, you're dealing with issues on the floor, usually uh, in situations where people are, um, uh, you know, they're upset about something, you're there to, you're kind of like the, the, the shop floor lawyer for them, and you know, uh, and once in a while, you know, um, you have to not only, you know, you're there to defend them, but you're also there um, to tell them when they're wrong, you know, if they, if they, they're, they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, then you know you have to come clean with that and make sure you know. And I think that that's that's also the the other part of when you're when you're speaking, not only in groups like this, but when you live you know just living your life is is being honest with people and sometimes brutal honesty, and and that's hard to do because sometimes it's easier just to be passive and tell them what they want to hear. But um, uh, over the years, I learned uh, what I call uh, Irish diplomacy. And uh, a friend of mine had a plaque on on, uh, on his uh, on his desk. Anyway, Irish diplomacy, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. It's not too bad, but anyway, Irish diplomacy is when you tell somebody to go to um, heck in such a way that they're looking forward to the trip. <laughs> and, <laughs> Anyway, and it, it's you know it's a valuable tool, and it's a tool that I've I've used over the years. And sometimes you know you just have to be blunt with people, but there's other times when you know and you can you can say it's Irish diplomacy or bedside manner. You know you can still get the message across to people without um, uh, you know upsetting them or uh, making an enemy out of them. So um, I, I learned so much by what I call the school of hard knocks, just being out on the floor and. and Doing that, so every step of the way from there, I, I went on to be uh, come vice president of, of my union, and that's when I really got into a lot of different negotiations. So, uh, learned a lot of different skills that way. So, all the everything that I've learned along the way um, are tools that I feel like I have in my tool box, and, and are things that you know that, that can help me. The the other uh, tool that um, that I that I think is valuable is sometimes. You know, you have to get very passionate about what you're talking about. Um, but if you're, you know, and by that I mean, you know, sometimes if you have to raise your voice, but I do that very sparingly, and, uh, and but when you do do that, it, it's very effective. Uh, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I see people that do that all the time, and they use, lose their credibility very quickly. Um, as I said earlier, my, my speaking style is really uh, off the cuff. I, I uh, uh, union meetings, uh, one of the things that I do, I have to run a union meeting uh, once a month. And um, over the years, the best way that I, I can describe that, and I, and I have a great, uh, uh, there's a great group of people that I work with, but when you're up at the podium, what I, it's what I call swimming with, swimming with the sharks. 
and you have to be prepared for anything. So knowing, knowing parliamentary procedure, being prepared, um, knowing uh, usually if somebody was coming with an issue that, that was gonna, uh, where they were gonna try and trip you up, usually um, you'd hear about it before the meeting so you could be prepared for just about anything. Not, it wasn't very often that as I, uh, in the last six years that an issue came up that, that I wasn't prepared to deal with. And, uh, Part of it is, is some of the, the, the past leaders of the organization, every once in a while, they like to challenge you, have a little fun with you, and, and see if they can trip you up. And, uh, you know, so I always had my parliamentary procedures right in front of me, so, and uh, that, that always became very helpful and helped me get through a lot of tough times. Uh, the, uh, the one, the one other thing that I, you know, as you get into a subject, if, if you're on the assembly floor and you're, you're trying to, you, you know, win, you know, win the influence and in favor of people trying to get them to vote with you, is, um, you know, to, to really speak passionately. The, the last issue uh, of our assembly session that I had a chance to, to talk about was the cochlear implants. And the cochlear implants are, are um, there's a young lady down at General Motors um, that, that had those put in, and she had had limited hearing before that, but in the last year or two, actually lost her entire hearing. She couldn't hear anything. Well, she had this, this implant. Well, what happened was, um, and the reason that it was on the assembly floor is because most insurance companies won't cover it. So the, the, when you're speaking to you know, publicly or in situations where you're trying to influence, people, it's nice to be able to talk um, about an issue and use a real example. So I had an opportunity to, um, it was just, you know, I, I, a lot of things happen in life and, you know, you can, uh, they, you can call them coincidences or they happen at the right time because it was two months ago that she came to the union meeting and it was right after that that I actually got to speak about that issue on the, out on the assembly floor. and. Um, you know, I, I gave her example, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I tried to um, appeal to the people across the aisle to look deep in their hearts. You know, if, if, you, um, if you can't convince them through, through logic, try to tug at their hearts a little bit. And um, what you find a lot, a lot of times in the state assembly is people are very disciplined. You can, you can tug at their hearts all you want, but they're not gonna sway off of their votes. So unfortunately, my, my persuasive speech, uh, and, and I can tell you that many other people gave those same speeches, uh, we didn't get it passed, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go back again next year and, and take on that, that uh, cause again and see if we can get that passed and, and so that insurance companies can, can uh, uh, include that in their, in their benefits. Uh, so that's that's one of the the uh, things that I like to do is is just you know have opportunities like that use real life examples and speak passionately about those issues. The the other thing that I that I like to do and it's it's saved me lots of times um, while I've run my meetings is humor. And um, one of the things that that I've done over the years is I've asked my I have two vice presidents and I have a recording secretary and then a financial secretary, and I've asked them to sit up on stage with me. And it seems to have had a, uh, an effect where, where people see us as a team, so they're less apt to try and attack, not to say that they don't, but also it's great to have people around you and you can use them as resources, you know, because quite frankly, I don't have all the answers and I'm, I'm the first to always admit that, you know, but usually I know where to go to get the answers. And if I don't have the answers, I've got those other resources and, you know, uh, there's a lot of times when they're, they're firing different information at me, so that's been very helpful over the years. And, uh, you know, like I said, with the humor, uh, um, I just recently, just as an example, had an opportunity to, uh, they had the local Dancing with the Stars, and I, I, my partner and I, Sue McGinnis, some of you might know her, uh, um, works for hospice in the community. There was eight couples, and, and we had a chance to dance in that a couple weeks ago, and we won. So um, some of the same fears that, that I've had with getting up in public speaking are the same fears because that was way out of my comfort zone. 
Um, but, you know, I, I love the challenge and, and doing different things and getting up in front of people and speaking. You know, it, it's always been challenging, but trying to take it to that next level. If I didn't feel comfortable doing that, I probably never would have gotten up in front of 650 people and danced. And, uh, but it was, a, it was a great experience. And uh, one of the things that I did at the union meeting is I, I, I had a, uh, a motion that the, the next president of the local, because I am retiring, that, that it should be a standard that the, the next president should have to get up and, and do Dancing with the Stars. And so um, um, I have an idea who that next president will be. Um, he was sitting on the stage. He wasn't so happy about it. But I can tell you, I've never had a motion pass with such, uh, uh, with such overwhelming support. So uh, we, we're riding him pretty hard on that. So. Um, one of the other things that I like to do is, and I get accused of having uh, being long-winded and having long meetings, is I like to recognize people for uh, the good things that they've that they've done in the community. Bob Besselo back there, he's been very active in our in our union, been on uh, the CAP committee, the education committee, you know, and and so I take a good deal of time as I go through the meeting, um, talking about events that have just happened, so I get a chance to, you know toot their horn and, and talk about the good things that, that not only the committee chairs but all the, all the people uh, involved with the union have, have taken on. So that's one of the fun parts of the job and I really enjoy that. So, and if I, and I'll take the heat about being long-winded and having long meetings um, to take that opportunity to recognize people because I think it's important to, to recognize people for, for their hard work and, and uh, I think that's been, been very beneficial over the last six years for me. And, and not only that, it motivates them to, to come around the next time, to, you know, to take that extra uh, step and, and go the extra mile to help out with different, different things that you're doing. Um, uh, I have on here uh, uh, how to deal with negativity in audiences. And, um, you know, in most cases, and you have to know who your audience is, and I think that's one of the most important things is know who the audience is. And you, like I said, usually uh, with my past experience with union meetings, I always knew when something was coming. But sometimes something will hit you sideways. So it's, it's a matter of always being prepared for those situations. And, you know, I always try and, um, you know, negativity is going to come. But you always try and, um, you know, I always try and look at the, at the positive and everything. So. Um, negative situations, you know, you can sure try to do your best to turn those things around. And in most cases, if if somebody is coming at, at you with an issue that and, and they're being negative, um, and say they're off base, the rest of the members are going to figure that out anyway, or the rest of the audience is going to figure that out anyway. So, uh, you know, overall, that's that's worked out pretty good. And um, as I said earlier, um, sometimes running those meetings, you felt like you were swimming with sharks. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I got too bloodied up. No, I'm going to knock on wood because I've got one more union meeting so, to run before I retire. So, uh, but overall, I, you know, I've had a, a good run at it. And it's, it's been, I've met so many, so many good people over the years. So, um, once again, always try to carry a positive message, uh, uh, finding common ground. Um, as you're dealing with issues up in Madison, for example, Democrats some, sometimes seem to be way over here and Republicans seem to be way over here. Well, my, my goal and my, my leadership style, my negotiating style is always to try and find that common ground and, and try and work to the middle to, you know, and try and find people that are like-minded. And uh, um, as I continue to be involved in the state legislature, I'm hoping at some point to be in leadership and take the same style that I, that I used negotiating with the General Motors, Blackhawk Credit Union, uh, Mercy East, uh, Blackhawk Credit Union, and finding that common ground because we want businesses to be successful. And, uh, and I found a lot of value in working together, uh, working to, together with the uh, Four Janesa, which is our Chamber of Commerce in Janesa, finding that John Beckard, uh, who's the head of that organization, him and I, uh, numerous times, he'd be given a speech and and, and or I'd be giving a speech, and we, you know, we say we're not going to agree on everything, but there's a lot of areas where we can agree, and let's find that common ground and work together. And I'll tell you, when we've done that, 
we're a powerful, uh, powerful entity, and and uh, you know I feel like uh, we can move mountains by working together. So, you know, just having that positive attitude, working together, and um, uh, also one area that I. What I like to do too is if I'm in a group setting and there's a number of people giving speeches is um, trying to listen to what other people have to say. Like I said earlier, I don't have all the answers, but, um, and then trying to weave, weave uh, the, the different messages that you heard from different speeches into my own message um, if I get an opportunity to speak and that's, that's worked out very well also. And the, you know, the, the bottom line is uh, practice makes perfect. You know, you just, uh, a lot of these things you have to do over and over again. And uh, sooner or later, you know, you, you get up there and, and uh, it, things smooth out, you know. Um, and, it, and it becomes fun. Yeah, yeah. So I encourage you all to, um, you know, practice, practice, practice. Yeah, I'm sure the students here are going to, if you haven't given your, your uh, speeches yet, you're going to get the opportunities to do that. I just want to thank you all for being here tonight, and it's amazing how quickly 25 minutes go, and I know I want to uh, open it up and give a, you all a chance to ask questions if you'd like. So with that, that's the end of my presentation, and I just want to thank you all for, for being here, and I certainly would open up for questions. <clears throat> continuous improvement and you know one of the th I may join your Toastmasters group because I still have a lot to learn you know I, mean, um, I didn't have a lot of formal training but a lot of what I call you know school of hard knocks and you know, doing it um, you know, learning as you go so so I still feel like I have a lot to learn uh, in public speaking and sometimes I feel like I do really well at speeches and other times uh, you know it's like oh I, I could have covered this or I could but overall, you know, there is a certain comfort level that I have now. There's a saying that I usually, when I go and meet with the Boy Scouts, I always, um, uh, we always talk about uh, their merit badges. And I always, I always tell the kids that I, I think of their merit badges and, and with the Eagle Scouts that they're like feathers. And, you know, when the, when the Scouts jump off of that cliff and, you know, just trust, they're so far along as far as that development and you know they have a lot of different skill sets, so you know they're probably they're probably going to fly pretty good. For me, when I first jumped off that cliff, I, I the feathers were very undeveloped, and I just you know uh, a lot of the things that I've done in life where you just start flopping as hard as you can, and hopefully those uh, feathers will develop before you hit bottom. So and and so uh, I just you know that's one of the things that I've used over the years. Other questions? Would you be able to give us a little evaluation of the 
two of the Democratic, well, you can get all three of them if you want, of their speaking skill and style. What do you think of, of each of the three candidates from, from the delivery standpoint, not, not their content? Okay. The three presidential candidates? Yes, getting into politics. <laughs> um, you know, I, one of the, in all levels of politics, and we just had the race for Supreme Court, and one of the bis biggest disappointments that I have is how negative it has become. And, um, you know, as I look at, at in John McCain, um, as, as I look at uh, Barack Obama, I think once we get through this primary process, I think you're probably gonna see a race that is more congenial than we've seen in years. But, um, in, in fact, I, I had an opportunity, I was in Pensacola, Florida, and I actually said that on the, on the air, that I thought that, that uh, you know, they, both of them bring a, a freshness, you know, that they want to take the high road. But unfortunately, in this day and age, you, you know, it, it seems like, although I think the public is on to it and they're getting tired of the negative politics, it's been proven over the years to work. And uh, so, uh, Individually, I, I've been I've been disappointed um, with with some of the attacks. Uh, mostly, it's you know just like uh, Barack Obama said, when you're out front, you know people are are going to be nipping at your heels. And I think that Hillary's doing everything; she's pulling out all the stops to try and, and win this primary. And I just don't like where it's gone. And you know, and I just think that I wish it could be more positive. Um, John McCain uh, has proven through this process that you can take the high road. When everybody counted him out a year ago, here he, here he, you know, they say that the cream rises to the top and that he did survive that uh, primary process when, like I said, everybody counted him out. So, um, and you never heard him uh, getting real negative. So, Barack Obama, I've had a chance to meet him personally a number of times and uh, like I said, uh, whether he's on the stage or off the stage, it's just that positive ad attitude that he has. It's just um, that air that he has. Um, like I said, I don't think we've seen that since the 1960s. And, and so I'm hoping that we can end the primary soon so that, that we can get uh, back to you know, talking about the issues and things can be more positive. So. saying that, that I haven't made comments that I've regretted. Um, I try and limit it as much as I can, but um, for me, part of my foundation is, is with Dale Carnegie, you know, and the, the power of positive thinking. And, you know, if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't have anything uh, nice to say, don't say anything at all. And so I try and stay as positive as I can uh, in my message. Um, but, you know, when you're, when you're under the microscope, like they're under the microscope, and you know they can take one sound bite that is totally out of context with what, which with, with what they were trying to say. Um, you know, I just don't know. I mean, I don't know that I would the scrutiny that they're under. I, I, I just can't imagine the you know the pressure cooker that they're in. So, I you know, um, I guess the answer is to try and stay as positive um, as you can in everything that you do. You know, in every. 
every aspect of your life. And uh, that's, that's how I try and lead my life. Um, there's probably uh, people around me that care about me very much that say, well, that's not the Mike Sheridan I know. But, you know, <laughs> now, you know, I'm not always that way. I think we're all human, you know. So, but, you know, you just try and it's a, it's a, it's a great, it's, it's helped me in, in the way that I try and live my life. That's an interesting perspective on him. College students, we got to get some questions from the college students here. So, anybody? Which now are you guys all from Madison or different campuses? Well, no, we're from we're from Craig actually. Oh, well, that's right. I yeah. keep thinking you're yeah. in college. Yeah. You got it's, it's next year. Sure. We've got a couple months left, and we believe we're counting down the days. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'd like to give your hand.